Hello everyone, my name is Clementine, welcome back to Clementine Creative. Um, maybe you never left, so there's no welcome back for you. Yeah, hey, then you've been here the entire time. Maybe you've been actually waiting every, you know, every, ever since I started this YouTube channel, maybe you've been on the computer 24-7 just waiting for my videos. That definitely happened, I believe that happened. I feel like most of the people watching my videos actually are 24-7 on my channel, just waiting for that Friday to uh, come up and then then are there on DeviantArt and they notice that the video is going to be up in 4 hours after a certain journal has been posted. <sighs> the troubles of being someone who, wanna watch my, who wants to watch my videos. Anyways, um, welcome back if you weren't here all the time. Um, I am back with this video uh, that you are currently watching and uh, this is basically the painting process of the last week's video where I did the sketch. First I want to talk about this thing that I actually have written here on the paper because I, I was actually afraid that I was gonna forget to mention it. Which is, it says talk about the rotation. Uh, yeah, I know. It, what, what is it talking about? Uh, what I'm trying to talk about is me rotating my canvas, which is something that you've definitely noticed and you probably thought it was annoying as hell, because if you hadn't, then kudos to you, because I have and my girlfriend has and everybody basically, you know, that I know that watches it, um, they said that uh, it's kind of annoying and I am so sorry for that. So the deal is that I usually turn my canvas to get my arms pivot point and I think it's called a pivot point don't hold me for the word though um, you know to be basically able to move my wrist the natural way the way it was meant to go and you know if you draw traditionally obviously you just turn the paper and here's the same thing you know you turn the canvas but if you're filming uh, and then you speed up the process it shows up as a sort of spazzing or some weird just some weird you just a and he's just like rotating so fast and then you're like uh, it really starts to hurt your eyes because it, it is it's happening even now and I am truly truly sorry for that that was not on purpose like I said it's just uh, it's a habit of mine and I don't think I'll ever be you know able to truly get rid of it uh, I will try to decrease the use of the rotation tool all right I'll try to decrease the rotation tool, but uh, I doubt that it's gonna improve by like 100%. Because it's just, you know, it's very hard for me to paint and not, and I cannot just turn my tablet and, you know, because uh, I actually watch at the computer screen and the tablet. Sometimes, you know, it depends on switch, but uh, I cannot keep, uh, you know, rotating my tablet. That would be really annoying because, and why would you even do it if you can just press one button and, you know, it's the canvas. Uh, I have thought of some ways which would help um, with the filming uh, and that would be something like, you know, I have a Cintiq back on tablet and what I can do is actually I can screen capture uh, my Cintiq screen if I, let's say I have a duplicate screen I can screen capture one screen where the painting is just happening but on the other, I actually paint. But the thing is that for some weird reason, uh, my Cintiq does not want to properly connect uh, as a extension screen on my iMac, and yeah, that's a problem. So you know, for now, you know, let's try to hold hold it in uh, like a fart, but you know, differently. Uh, let's try to hold it in, and you know, hopefully, it'll get better. Uh, now that I got that out of the way, uh, let's talk about what's happening here, what you've been watching while I've been apologizing, uh, trying to, uh, trying to get your, uh, trying to get you to find mercy in my, in me, uh, or what? Whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's happening here is that I'm painting. I know you did not expect that. No, it's uh, I'm painting. Um, this process is the same as you always see. Nothing new here. Uh, really, the design is the only thing that will change slightly. Everything else is the same. Um, I really, really like how it turned out. The end, you know, per it's really personal preference uh, whether you like the design or not because, as we know, even in Assassin's Creed Unity and Assassin's Creed Syndicate, 
you could customize your assassin's cloth. So you could have, you know, you could make the character have, you know, uh, gauntlets, different gauntlets, uh, different uh, torso pieces, uh, different hood, uh, hoods, and you know, different. Uh, I think trousers even and boots. Uh, I'm not sure. So a lot of things. So with that, when that came out, you know, there's a, you know a certain amount of freedom and customization that you can do. So maybe you won't like this piece as much. But really, it's personal preference. I really like it. And as you already know, it is a combination of uh, pirates, which is kind of my flavor, you know, the kind of checkered pattern. And then, you know, the whole samurai armor on one side and a little bit on the other and the whole ninja look and just the Japanese feel. It's very noble, very Japanese-ish, you know, very Asian-ish, I will say. Um, not sure if what I'm saying makes any freaking sense at all, but hopefully it does. To me, it kind of would fit this universe of a assassin in Japan or in China or, you know, basically in Asia. So, a lot of things are gonna change. Um, well, I do say a lot. Basically, it's some things that you will notice. There's gonna be no, let's say, throwing knives on the chest, like on the chest belt. Uh, the chest belt is not gonna be, um two belts but it's actually gonna be one whole belt and you know some other minor things but uh, they're you know they're noticeable so as you're seeing me do here uh, this design I am uh, doing this technique where I color in with one solid color which is usually the darkest color and then I apply light to it so I'm doing the exact reverse as I would do if I was traditionally drawing and I would draw in the lines and then shade because the light is already in there, so there's, there would really be no need for me to, and light like put light, you know, on, on white paper if you're drawing, you're just shading. Here I'm basically adding a solid layer of one color that's darkest color, and then I color color uh, in the the highlights. So that's my process. But as you can already see, I have something already done. This is what I was talking about. This process is that this is you know try to get this in a. In action you try to work in a way where you already have something done at least it, it, even if it's just for you to understand try to do it uh, it's production safe uh, but if you don't it's also fine if you're fast or whatever uh, but again and I cannot repeat this more uh, just don't limit yourself to lime time not to lime you don't have to limit yourself to lime but you do have you don't know what you don't have to limit yourself to lime, but neither do you have to time. Gosh, I'm a freaking guru. Anyways, uh, so yeah, don't limit yourself to time, but also, but at the same time, try to find shortcuts that will help you make this, you know, make a piece faster. I'm trying to, I'm sure I'm gonna try to explain how to get into the motivation of painting something, and, you know, uh, this being the example. Uh, which can, you know, probably help you when you do uh, your paintings. So I rarely ever work in that silence. Uh, that silence is, it's a dreadful thing, very hard to work in. To me, it's kind of weird. I could work in it, but if I don't have to, I don't. So what I do is I like to get in the mood, just like sex, but different. <laughs> um, what I mean by that and not by sex, I mean by getting in the mood, is that uh, I try to have in the background stuff related to whatever I'm doing. So if I'm going to be doing Assassin's Creed, I can have Assassin, either Assassin's Creed soundtracks or someone talking about Assassin's Creed, someone talking about games in general, I guess, because this is connected to games, or I can have uh, Assassin's Creed gameplay going on in the back. Uh, in my case, I did have Assassin's Creed gameplay uh, made uh, by the Red, the Red Brad on YouTube. Um, that's the channel name the red bread he makes uh, YouTube commentary on you know YouTube walkthrough commentary uh, I love him he's absolutely amazing at what he does he's very interesting to listen to uh, and that's why uh, it kind of helped me to even watching his uh, videos uh, helped me get to a certain get certain ideas but really it was a very good basically a very good you know thing to listen to I had a bunch of fun listening to him and it helps it helps you get in the zone of designing uh, or painting. Really, when you're designing, sometimes I don't have necessarily someone talking in the background just because it's then distracting. 
But when I'm painting, I, I totally have it because for most professionals, um, it's like this that we don't have to, us who know how to paint really well, we don't have to think when we're painting as much as, uh, as one would think. We don't really think where we're gonna put paint, it's just something that's natural. It's almost like uh, Fang Zhu from FZD fzdschool.com. What, what am I talking about? <laughs> Sorry. I am so bad with naming links with FZD School uh, on YouTube. If you haven't checked that out, also concept art, you know. Um, FZ, uh, blah, blah, blah. Fang Zhu from FZD, uh, he said that it's almost autopilot for him. And it's true, it actually does kind of feel like autopilot. You aren't really thinking on how you're gonna paint this, you know. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna put light here. You don't, you know, it's actually so natural after a long time of doing it. You don't have to think about it. And that's a, if you're in that position, that's a really good thing because then you can just, you know, focus on designing. And then once you're done, you can just paint. And uh, really, it's not that hard to paint once you're um, in it, you know. But that's kind of that, you know. So basically, to help you get in the mood for painting, you should, you know, should, in the background, you should have stuff related to whatever you're doing now. Obviously, you don't have to have that. You know, if you have a certain preference, if you want to watch, uh, let's say, a series, or if you want to watch The Walking Dead, put on The Walking Dead in the background. You know, I don't care. Whatever helps you get in the zone. But remember, you want to be in the zone when you're designing. Because if you're forcing uh, the hell out of yourself when you're doing this, it's uh, it's going to be, you know, people are going to notice it. Maybe not amateurs, you know, maybe not uh, your friends and some random people on Facebook that you have and you've never really met in real life but you just kind of added them because you know you thought they were good for promotion or just you maybe thought that you know they were uh, that they were your friends really you just met them on one party or you know people that know your ex-girlfriend so you can kind of stalk on her over Facebook because you know you're creepy like that uh, they won't notice but professionals will you know Professionals will definitely notice. They'll be like, okay, this guy was forcing it out. We can see that it is actually quite noticeable unless you're really good at, you know, hiding it uh, Then, you know, then do whatever uh, Here you're seeing me do the traditional I guess it's kind of traditional Assassin's Creed logo uh, belt buckle. I, f I think that almost every Assassin's Creed uh, Games the main character has this Assassin's Creed logo somewhere on their clothing as, as a belt buckle, I feel like. I'm not sure, so don't take me for a word, but I do feel like I've seen that on numerous designs, so maybe it's true, maybe it's not, I don't know. So I added that in because I thought it would look cool, and it actually does look cool, it looks very cool, um, and you can totally tell, okay, so this guy's an assassin, let's say not a Templar, but obviously you would be able to tell that this person is an assassin just by its clothes. Clothes, not clothes. <laughs> I have really weird English pronunciation sometimes when I'm airing, you know, when I'm filming this, so... Excuse me for that. Excuse-moi. Um, uh, I have been geeking... I have been geeking... nerding it out here. So if you don't play Assassin's Creed, you probably won't be knowing what Templars are, what Assassins are. Uh, but kind of quick summary, uh, Templars are the enemies and you're an Assassin, so... There you go. Uh, just so you will know the difference between Templars and Assassins and why and you know so Assassins have this badass clothing that's basically the idea uh, but yeah here you're seeing the basically the upper body is now just you know finished I think yeah now the upper body is finished now it's just the lower body uh, like I said before again using this technique of putting one solid color down and then applying light to it I really like how this piece turned out and I uh, I can scratch the gun uh, what happened was that, uh, in the end, I decided to add a bow. Now, in Assassin's Creed 3, you actually had a bow and a gun. But since this was a... Well, my main intention was to kind of make it look like it could fit in a Japanese environment. Because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Japan, and I, I feel like there's a lot of people who are huge fans of Japan out there. Uh, a lot of them uh, culture, uh, a lot of them uh, because of the anime, some of them because of the music, whatever your reasons are, um, I'm sure that we feel the same love, but whatever, uh, I wanted them for them to fit in the feudal Japan era, um, where, you know, ninjas and whatever, and then I guess ninjas can be Templars. 
but <laughs> like that's something about that. Uh, anyways, and I th I thought that this kind of uh, outfit would actually fit in that really well because I did watch a uh, video spot of the singer named Gop, and he actually has a lot of his video spots are actually basically dressed. He's dressed in a in a samurai because I think he said that in one interview that if he could, he would be. Uh, he would be born in a feudal Japan era, and if I'm failing in eras like feudal Japan, man, if I'm failing in that even, then you must know how awesome my knowledge of history uh, of Japan is. So hopefully I'm not failing, but let's you know for the sake of it, when I say feudal Japan, I mean like samurais, ninjas, and whatever. So hopefully that's correct. If it's not correct, I'm sorry that I'm horribly failing at at life right now, and I should probably go back to school. But I never quit school, alright? I finished school just throwing it out there but yeah I've kind of you know was trying to get it to fit that uh, you know that area that that sort of environment and I feel like I got did a really good job it does feel like this assassin is uh, more royal uh, I feel like in the past couple of years you know these um, Assassin's Creed uh, characters kind of had a more poor look to them so I know what you're thinking what the, what the frick am I talking about um, they had a more uh, more, uh, yeah, basically more poor look. Like in the beginning, uh, and especially in the Assassin's Creed where Ezio was the main character, I feel like those clothes were so much more royal. Like, oh god, this guy, like, uh, a lot more rich. Like, you know, rich people clothing. In later games, they did feel like they were more casual, more like a tr uh, Trump, like City Trump or whatever. Uh, not as much in uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. But it's definitely noticeable in uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag and then Assassin's Creed Syndicate. You know, Jacob has this kind of a just like a coat and a hoodie, and he actually wears a beret also on the head. Like, and you know, if you don't, if obviously you can customize him to look more badass, but you know, the beginning, the initial design is like that. Um, I wanted to, to look this person to be like really royal, this assassin, like, you know, show okay, this guy belongs to a noble um, clan that is fighting for the righteousness or you know for uh, the rights of human beings and whatever so yeah this is what I went for and I, I really feel like it looked nice especially the inner coat you know so that was kind of the aspect of it that I liked the most the actual inner coat so yeah um, there's nothing much really to say anymore about this video. Really, everything you saw today is the same as you saw me before. The rendering is the same. Um, like I said before, I'm really, really, really sorry about the, all of the rotation thing. I know it must be really annoying. And I, again, I am so sorry. Hopefully, that'll something. It's something that'll get fixed. But until then, you know, let's uh, let's just let's try to. You know hold through it and you know hopefully it'll, it'll I'll fix it when you know with practice that I'll actually stop rotating maybe they can't miss as much uh, thank you for watching this video I really had a lot of time making it uh, obviously I love making videos and hopefully here now you can see the a preview um, I did finish the painting a little bit after you know I stopped filming and then I finished it and now you can see the finished product Thanks for watching this video, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I did add in some samurai um, katana. Um, actually, this is more of a ninja katana, considering it's...